I didn't mind the idea of having some sort of quiz or whatever it was, but calling it guessing games, you're a middle-aged man, guessing games. Excuse me, I'm offended right. on both fronts. Right, right. I plan on living to 100, so therefore I'm not middle-aged. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I plan on living to... What are you doing to make that plan happen? I've stopped taking substances that will <laughs> prevent that happening. And I'm doing very yeah, well at it. You're if pushing you quit, me towards them. If you them. quit drugs, then you live to 100. That's part of the contract. I, I read that. In, right, on, on but a, guessing games is proper seven-year-old girl tackle. Like, oh, let's call it guessing games. That's the new video. Oh, you're so macho, aren't hey. you? Yeah, right, not calling something guessing games does not make me it macho. Is. It just makes me it normal, is. and it's not very often to say David that about Goggins myself. from Wish. Right, you're watching Scotty and Motte. We did call this something else. Uh, we're not calling it a guessing game. We're calling it Don't Believe They're Shite. This is where the two of us go over the week's news headlines. Uh, and as you can see from the thumbnail there, we're going to be talking about Kim. We're going to be talking about Vladimir. We're going to talk about Jimmy. But first up... It's a man who's been relatively quiet since he went on a complete meltdown and burned every bridge for his career, didn't he, pretty much? Like, he lost everything. Kanye West? Yes. Where does he stand on Kanye West, right? Because me and you are mental health advocates, so the importance of talking about mental health. He's obviously got issues. He's yeah. not well. But does that allow you to do some of the things he's done? Because going on the telly and saying that Hitler was all right, is not okay no and do you go well he's mentally ill so you know you can't blame him do you go well why have they put him on the telly when he's obviously got mental issues or do you say he shouldn't be saying those things he's well enough to know that that is wrong and he's saying it anyway i don't i don't think that uh being mentally ill gives you a license to say what the hell you want no, it's not an excuse that you could fall back on but I do think that a lot of people, especially around that time, because that seemed to be at the low point of his, I think his bipolar he's got amongst, mm. other, amongst other things, that he was definitely going through something because that was excessive, wasn't it? The sort of tweets and that. Yeah. There were people that were basically getting in front of a camera, knowing fine well that they're doing numbers. Yeah. That is bad. That's I mean, if, he so turns, if any guest turns up to studio wearing a mask and then says, I want to wear this and then on he, my interview, then you're going to say no. And then he was celebrating like, was it Hitler created the kettle or toaster or something like that? He said something outrageous. Yeah. Like he was, I, I think he created it with inventing the light bulb or the motorway or something. Yeah. Which is obviously wrong and bizarre. But it, I, to an extent, you can sort of not excuse it, but you can understand it. Yeah. You can have, you can have a, a level of empathy while still being disgusted. You talk about his, his yeah, 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 yeah. Not, rather, not what he said. Yeah, rather than be disgusted about what he said. But it's the people that are around him and that are saying, yeah, yeah, this would be a good publicity. Now, whether in his sort of mania whether he turns around and says, well, I'm doing it anyway. Do you know, yeah. like, like it, this, he's, for a long time in my mind, has had far too many yes men around him. And we'll get into what he's been, what, what he's in the paper for this week. But it, was, it reminds me of the Amy Winehouse situation. Because if you've seen the, the Amy documentary, yeah. and like the people around her who wanted to stay in business, because while she was making amazing music and stuff, the girl herself needed, a, you know, to sort of cut back and drink and look after her mental health. Yeah. But there were a lot of people that wanted to keep her out touring and keep that sort of cash cow, you know, she was a mess. Ma yeah, making it's money. Like, isn't it? When she's on t on stage and that, you just don't know what's going on. It's yeah. No, I, I hear you. I do. I think the 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 issue here, or the my take on it with Kanye West is he's obviously got mental issues. He, you know, he's he's bipolar. I think you've said, which yeah. kind of makes sense when you see the symptoms that he's displaying. But I also think. Excuse me. He's a bit of a knobhead anyway. I think before he's always had this, an ego. He's always been massively egotistical. He's come out with outrageous statements such as slavery was a choice and things like that years ago. You know, pallying up to Trump and, and sort of some of the actions that he did around that weren't great. And I think you can't put all of this down to him being mentally unwell. I think there is a, an egotistical, narrow minded person there who also suffers from issues. But then when you, you look at the flip side of it, he's also said outlandish things if you're from the, the right, if you think remember when he's on TV, Joe with uh, Mike Myers, and he said, yeah, he said but George Bush George doesn't, doesn't, like, doesn't like black people. Give, give a fuck about black people. But <laughs> that, mean, that, that, that again is the same side of the coin. It's just, talk, it's just more supportive of... No, but I don't think there is because I think that I, when he qualified that argument, about the way the media were portraying people after Hurricane Katrina 
and the difference he saw when he saw black people taking goods they were accusing him of looting when it was white there people there was a the, rationality the, the, there yeah. was a, I understand where he was coming from yeah and it was impassioned and it was off off the cuff and you think okay I think you know George Bush I think said it was the worst thing that happened to him during his presidency which is a, just a bizarre statement in itself really when you think of the things that he was guilty of but well, considering he was there for 9-11 and then Kanye West saying that was the worst. All, and, you know, <laughs> also, I mean, that's the, the, the million story. people that died in Iraq off the back of your illegal invasion as well, that don't bother you. And but Kanye the, West. Kanye West, a rapper saying some nasty on words about you on, the, on a telethon next to, you know, Austin Powers is the worst thing that happened to you. That says, speaks volumes to the idiocy of George W. Bush. But I could, I can rationalise, I can see the logic in what he was saying. He'd snapped... And he did say, you know, I'm trying to get, I want to give as much money as I can. I spoke to my business manager. Blah, blah, and then he just sort of snapped and said, George Bush doesn't care about black people, whatever. When he's saying the things he was saying about Hitler, yeah. when he was saying the things that he's been saying about slavery, there is no rationale to that. No, There's no, no, no argument where you go, okay, I can see where he's coming from here. I can't. Yeah. I can't see where he's coming from. Because there's a lot of yeah, nonsense. The, 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 he's got grounding for the argument as he, that he's trying to put through. Yeah. And I think with the ego that he had coming into the, the music industry, which, you know, I think we talk about, I'm not making the comparisons between Ferguson and, and Kanye West, but Ferguson, a lot of Ferguson's traits, you know, sometimes when we look at the Rock of Gibraltar and stuff, was a negative in terms of that sort of narrow-mindedness. But his loud mouth was part of the reason why he ended up being the success he was. But I think what happened is because he got so successful, he's trying to push the envelope too far, and now he's saying outlandish stuff before he's actually done the research, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. he's basically, he's gone like, right, what can I say that's controversial? And then he's gone, oh my God, like, this is gonna be difficult. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, like, it's like, how do we get out of this one? Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, I mean, I just, every time you see Kanye West in news, it's somewhat bad, isn't it? Basically. Well, I, I'm not too, I don't think this is a bad, I've, I've been Go reading on. into this interview this so, today. So, so basically the, the headline was Kanye West wanted to transform his Malibu home into a quote bomb shelter. Now this has come from his caretaker who's accused a rapper of, of unpaying his wages and then firing him because he, did, he refused to strip the place of windows and stuff. And he basically wanted to live. He's trying to turn it into like a back cave sort of vibe, but to remove all electricity from the building. Wow, okay. Uh, it was to like, have some secret Wi-Fi that nobody else could uh, listen into. I mean, it's... it's like doomsday preppers. It reeks of like, uh, you know, complete paranoia. Yeah. Uh, he was quoted as saying that he didn't want the Clintons or the Kardashians to be able to get involved or to, to be able to contact him. So he wanted to okay. live. And the, the caretaker was saying, you couldn't live in there. I had seagulls that were coming through because there was no windows and stuff. And right. basically you wanted to take all the marble down and basically just live in quite um, a reduced... I think, uh, can you pull up the article there a, a little bit? The, it makes it, it doesn't want anything to do with commercialism. So someone that's made a shitload of money off the back of Adidas, uh, and that just basically wanted to like remove all windows and electricity. Yeah. What do you make of that? What, uh, what, was that? what was that direct, like a recluse? What was that famous director? No, Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. Yeah, he was um, he, from the guy for who, um, the billionaire recluse. He lived in a hotel, though, didn't he? And obviously yeah. he, had, he had issues. Um, I mean, turning his $57 million house into a bomb shelter, um, stripping out the windows and the plumbing and the electricity and replacing stairs with slides is apparently the ac accusations. I mean, again, all very bizarre, very strange. It's just another chapter in the the sort of the the history of nonsense that but has gone on with Kanye West. If you it? remove the plumbing, I mean that's going to be an issue regardless if you stand or sit, isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and also the, what, what, the replacing stairs with slides like that's going to wear thin after the first time and you've got to realize you've got to get back up. Yeah. <laughs> and like that it's just it's just nonsense in it. It's it's yeah, I think it Tony Saxon is the, the is he the um, project manager for this and property caretaker says that um, labour code violations, unpaid wages, and wrongful retaliatory termination. Yeah, it's just it's just another one of the, those stories where you go, what is he on about? What is he? What's he doing? He needs to stop. Yeah, that's what that 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 was the line there where he says he does not want to be a slave which is a word that is used a lot and, and had a commentary on, to modern conveniences. I mean, all right, yeah. If you don't want to be a slave to modern conveniences, 
you don't want to have, you know, like I don't think a door uh, is a, a laptop it, or whatever. I don't or, think a door is a modern yeah, convenience. Or stairs. I don't think windows are modern convenience. I think that's really bizarre. Right. What is it? I, and then the caretaker said he was a prisoner of the house and he couldn't leave it alone because there was no key. There was no windows or doors. I slept on the floor. Right. So with that in mind, I'm going to put you on the spot. What modern convenience would you get rid of? Oh, that's a very good question. Modern convenience. <sighs> What's the, the biggest convenience that you rely on? Rely on, do you reckon? Phone, probably. Yeah, yeah. Gotta be your phone on it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what though? I had a digital detox not long ago, and it was ace. But you couldn't. I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't get rid of my phone. Because would you get rid of an app on your phone that could help your life? Oh, see, I got WhatsApp. Yeah. Would go. Really? Oh God, WhatsApp, man. That's the bane of I'm, my life. I'm tempted with Twitter, you know. Really? Lex, yeah. Because it's being run by a right wing megalomaniac, isn't it? Let's have it right. Yeah. He was liking, he was sharing videos from, was it Paul Golding, the Britain First guy, not long ago? He shared a video that had come from him about people in, I think it was in Brixton, some black people in Brixton saying we need to shop at more black owned businesses. Yeah. And I was just thinking, and that was getting criticised and called out, and it was just like, yeah, it's a bit of a bim fire, isn't it? I seen yeah. Ice Cube called him out the other day. Did you see that? Did you know? I didn't yeah. see that. Elon Musk did a, you know, now do you feel old? This this used to be Ice Cube and now this is him. It was a joke. A picture of Ice Cube, then a picture of a glass of water. And then um, Ice Cube shot back with, this used to be, if, if, this is, a, if you're stupid, this used to be Twitter and now it's this. And it was a picture of Twitter logo and then a picture of a bin fire. Right, okay, that's so very good. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, good. yeah. No, I, I've, I've come off Twitter more times than I have drink. Uh, what do you think, Alexa? Yeah, I mean, I quite like, like with Kanye's music, I genuinely really like it and I have for quite a few years, like there's a couple of his albums. That's Nutty Geezer day. there, isn't it? Nutty Geezer, oh. eh? he's right in, in his chicken in his channel Kanye around West. Cornwell. Cornwell? Yeah. yeah. Cornwell? Cornwell. Well, I had Cornwell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. I listen to them while I'm like, you know, gearing up for like a bare knuckle fight and that. Um, when it's like, you know, the hey. Millwall firms and that. Yeah, when you meet up with the Millwall firms, nothing gets you in the mood better than a bit of uh, gold digger. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have this thing now with Millwall where, <laughs> because of my strength, they just fight me on my own. Right. So yeah, it's, you, yeah. it's you versus Millwall? Yeah. Right. And I have okay. to ring up and go, hello, is that Millwall? Is that, is that Millwall? Yeah. And they yeah. go, I'm coming. Yeah. And I just kind of go through. And there's all these, you know, men from Millwall, and I just kind of punch. It's like one punch, but it just cuts through them all. If you know what I mean? It's yeah. Like yeah. A you like Thanos with his glove? Yeah. yeah. You, you, you've got muscles the size of Kanye's eagle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have muscles bigger than some cities. Yeah. Not all of them, but you're talking <laughs> like a like an Exeter. Is I'm Exeter talking... a city? Yeah. Right. Is Newport a city? It's a county. Are no. you sure? Newport in Wales. Are you playing guessing game? Preston, you <laughs> say. No, we're definitely not playing guessing games. I think Newport is a say in Wales. It's Newport there. I saw it already. City, city in Wales. City Wales, in Wales. Do you know I only ask that because it comes up sometimes in pointless, like name a city. So and somebody was re referring to um, Port Levin, where he's from. Producer Alexi on the comments and apparently used to score his heroin from there. Yeah. Really? Got a heroin yeah, problem yeah, there? Yeah. Do you know what? I, di I didn't realise there was a heroin problem there. Um, well, apparently there's not. Did you, not know, get, did you, you still not, get it? Hey, did you not notice it when you sat there with a syringe hanging out your arm? Do you know the thing is? I thought I ran those streets, Jay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? competition, man. They call, it, they call it top Braithwaite for a reason. You know, I thought I ran the streets of Port Levin, but clearly I wasn't even walking. Yeah. All yeah. These wow. Heroin addicts. Well, now you found out there's a bit of a... There's, there's heroin dealers that have snuck onto your patch. I'm sure you'll be dealing with them swiftly. I'm going to have to reclaim with the, the streets. Firm. Yeah, I think you need to. Yeah. It's all going to pop off in uh, Port Levin very soon. I don't want to be... Uh, I'm glad I'm not around that area for when it does. Yeah, me too. Right, Alexi, what's the next one we're going to talk about? I believe, is it Jimmy Fallon? Jimmy Fallon. What's, so, been up, what's happened here then? He's kind of similar to uh, James Corden and Ellen and Philip, all these people. He's kind of a lot of uh, allegations came out against him. Um, so his show, The Tonight Show, was described as a toxic work environment. Um, since 2019, there's been nine, 2014, sorry, there's been nine Tonight Show runners, which is mad. Showrunners, yeah. Um, he came to work drunk once. Wow. Um, employees called the dressing room cry rooms, which is quite sad. 
and yeah, working on the Tonight Show took an employee, a, a toll on an employee's mental health and he basically released a statement and he apologised on Zoom, I believe, which is very sincere. Um, he said, it's embarrassing and I feel so bad. Sorry if I embarrassed you and your friends and your family. I feel so bad, I can't even tell you. I want this show to be fun. It should be inclusive for everybody. It should be funny. It should be the best show the best people now what's this about seinfeld what's jerry saying scroll up a little bit let's see that bit go and read us that um so according to two employees fallon was taping with seinfeld when he scolded the crew member holding his cue cards seinfeld allegedly told fallon to apologize to the worker and he did so that's quite something isn't it but then seinfeld has responded and said this is so stupid i remember this moment well I teased Jimmy about a flub and we all had a laugh about how rarely Jimmy is thrown off. It was not uncomfortable at all. Jimmy and I still occasionally recall it and laugh. Idiotic twisting of events. You can imagine that though, because I, I just can't imagine an angry Jerry Seinfeld telling somebody to, you better apologise. Nah. You know, in a threatening manner, I just can't see that happening. I mean, that's not to dismiss the allegations of it being a, a toxic workplace, but... What? Are you a fan of Jimmy Fallon? No, I can't stand him. Why can't you stand Jimmy Fallon? He's just a... Dickhead, isn't it? Why? Like, like when he ruffled Donald Trump's hair, and like Trump had come out with all these horrible things when he's running for president about Muslims, about all sorts of people, and he was sort of making him out like this figure of fun. Like it's only just like a funny little uncle, isn't it? He's not. He was. Uh, I know he went on to become president or whatever, but I think too many in the media were, were willing to normalise what he was doing when he mocked a disabled reporter. When he said that let's ban all Muslims. You should be calling that out. You should be criticising him. Even if you're on the Tonight Show, okay, you're saying, oh, I'm not a political commentator or that. But you have, and you did comment on his politics when he became president, and it was obviously how horrible he was. Yet you just sort of legitimised him with your just proper juvenile and idiotic behaviour with him. It was just poor form, I thought. And also, with Jimmy Fallon, I don't know, I've seen a few things, like the whole, what was it, the, the thing with um, Paris Hilton? the nft thing and it's like, oh my god that's like the one of the worst bits of television i've ever witnessed in my life where they both sat there with the pictures of their nfts talking about it and there's been a couple of instances where if you watch him and you see like he can be a bit i don't know he comes across as a bit of a knob a bit smug yeah it doesn't know he's all right with certain people like megastars or whatever and yeah. some of others i can i don't know something about him i just really really he does see, he does seem to fawn do you mm. know when they, when they are mega stars? He does. He does. Seem What's to that? Sorry, the interaction say. with Amy Perler. What's that say? Go on, read that out, Alexa. Um. So, here we go. So, Amy Perler was new to Saturday Night Live when we were all crowded into seventeenth floor writers' room waiting for the Wednesday night read through to start. Amy was in the middle of some nonsense with Seth Meyers across the table, and she did something vulgar as a joke. I can't remember what it was exactly, except it was dirty and loud and so called unladylike um jimmy fallon turned to her and in a faux squeamish voice said stop that it's not cute i don't like it amy dropped what she was doing went black in the eyes for a second and wheeled around on him i don't presumably fucking care if you like it and then she i mean that commented. that seems absolutely nothing to be honest with you exactly i think a lot of these things are, are are nothing and that's yeah. the issue but if there's people that work for him saying like I mean, 14, is it 14 showrunners, whatever he went through? Seems quite a lot. I don't know the exact figure that other shows have. Um, Off the back of this, though, I must go, I, I, I've read this article and there were people who worked at the t who used to work at the Tonight Show saying, I've never seen an example. Yeah, I mean, it, this to me sounds like it, it could be nothing. Or it's it not could, or, it's definitely or, not it's not can you level can, no, can, no, cancellation. Oh, like, sorry. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cancel. No, it doesn't feel like that. And also, if you're going to work on a a TV show out there is going to be some sort of tempest flare or whatever I, I just don't like Jimmy Fallon but from what I've seen I don't think this is anything that deserves him to be cancelled I'd rather he was cancelled for being shit if Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon's shit who's, who's I mean if Jimmy Fallon's shit and James Corden's below Jimmy Fallon I'm not going to label what that is who's the best sort of American TV show host Trevor Noah I like Trevor like Noah's alright um, I, I mean I don't even I know the ones that I really like don't do it anymore Letterman I liked Letterman, I thought he was all right. His series um, is good on Netflix. I like Conan O'Brien. I used to love it when he had um, Norm MacDonald on because he had him on a lot. He was like his substitute guest, wasn't he? Like, if, if anyone something could. for Paul out. Yeah, he'd always get, have him on. I, I loved him. Um, and I didn't mind Leno. I thought he was all right. 
But yeah, I'm just not a big fan. Oh, I'll tell you what I do like. I like Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. And he's a, the thing with Jimmy Kimmel is he seems like a nice guy. And I quite like that. I like spending time with watching someone who you think I'd like to spend time with him in real life. I wouldn't like to spend time with Jimmy Fallon in real life or yeah. James Corden or whoever. Um, but some of these guys, you can quite like him, and you know, especially the old school ones. But yeah, I've never been a fan of Jimmy Fallon. What about you? Who's your go to guy? You uh, Trevor like? Noah's probably the one I go to yeah. in America. Yeah, I've been listening to a couple of uh, podcasts this week about him. But I mean, he gets a little bit too political. I like something, you know, pull it back a little bit. He's not, the thing the is, um, I preferred, oh, uh, John Stewart. Yeah, I mean, John Stewart was John Stewart gold, was, man. Yeah, but yeah, amazing. And to be fair to Trevor, that wasn't an easy gig to slide No, into. you're right. That's a really, really good point because John Stewart was just a 10 out of 10 host and political commentator. And so going after, uh, after him would, would have been a bit of a hiding to nothing. I think we struggle in that sort of sphere in England. I agree completely. You know, I, I don't think there's anyone that sort of, I mean, God rest his soul, Michael Parkinson, who's just recently passed away. But I, but I don't, who would there be? It's very, we have daytime TV presenters in the evening, don't we? We don't really, there isn't a talk show and now. The show that I enjoy, for me, is Graham Norton. Yeah. I enjoy Graham Norton. I do think it. I do think he's good at what he does. And what he does is, you're not watching Graham Norton because he's going to grill a politician. No, no, no. He'll no, get no. stars on and he'll get them to share funny stories and he'll get them to tell you little anecdotes that amuse you. And he has a good rapport with him. And he's just he's easy. He's easy to watch. Do you yeah, know what I mean, yeah. I don't think he's any reinvented the wheel or anything like that. I don't think he needs to. And it's not really about him as well. He'll let guests come on and just talk yeah. and obviously they've all done the research and they know these stories and you, you know they know because a lot of them reference it and they say oh yeah you, you everyone's very right. comfortable on that couch again, yeah I don't like that yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's enjoyable on a, on a Friday night it's half ten or whatever it is or ten o'clock you know seeing him sat with I don't know Helen Mirren and um, Will Smith or whatever you know what I mean he's always like pretty chill with, with yeah. these guests these, uh, these big guests and they sort of come out of the shell Um and just a, a really relaxed atmosphere and I think that works well yeah no I agree with you right what's the next one Alexa so next up quite a different route um, Putin and Kim Jong-un have been spending a bit of time together getting to know each other becoming a bit friendly and what I was thinking with this when we were kind of talking about that we were going to do this these two men are very angry men I think we'd all agree kind of hate everything want to cause all this destruction I read an article earlier, and it was based on this official National Ge Geographic approved documentary. 20 years ago, on the same day, both of these men had the same problem. They were both in their home, having a nice Sunday afternoon. They had a bit of, I don't know, a bit of country file, maybe a bit of Super Sunday, you know, a bit Barclays. And they both decided, we want to hoover something up a bit, you know, just to, just to get things going. And both of them at the same time hoovered and the hoover exploded. And the rumour is that since then, that is why they've had so much anger at the world. That's why they want to destroy the world. It's always with the hoovers with you. Always, always with the hoovers. It is. Seriously. You need to get over this hoover fetish you've got. Yeah? I don't think I ever can, Jay. Uh, did you do things with hoovers when you were younger? You can't stop. You talk about Jay Edgar Hoover all the time. Nice, nicely done. I'll give you that one. Hey, I so. Did you ever have a moment with a Hoover? Look, me and Henry were never exclusive. I had mates who used to use it to pretend they had love bites. Yeah, everyone's done that. I, yeah. uh, well, not everyone. You've done that. No, do you know what? I, um, I remember my mate who did get a love bite and pretended that we'd done it with a Hoover on him. Oh, they were love bites were skanky, weren't they, man? They're like yeah. you can't walk anywhere with them on. What do you make of this pair? Producer then? Ethan from Paddock had a love bite not long ago. Well, they'll say not long ago, but yeah, yeah, year year last, last time his girlfriend. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like when he when he first started, I think he had a love bite. Fair play. Um, didn't realise you were still in fashion, much like uh, Kim Jong Un's haircut. What do you make of these two meeting up? Is it a cause for concern? It's a couple lads meeting up on a night, having a laugh. Yeah. Right? Do you know what I mean? If meeting you, the boys, meeting up, if having you, a giggle. If you could go out for a giggle with one of them, would you go Kim or Vladimir? Um, Vladimir. Cause would my, you really? Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, you know. Vladimir rides horses bare-chested. I mean, I, it's not a great choice. 
to be honest with well, you. Well, tough. <laughs> I think me and Putin have more in common than me and Kim Jong Un. Elaborate on that. We've both had plastic surgery. Has he had plastic surgery? Yeah. Has he had plastic surgery? Look at his boat race. All right, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Jesus, what? It's not been the first thing that came to right. mind. Go on. I like Oliver Stone films. He's been interviewed by Oliver Stone. Yeah. He does a mean Blueberry Hill on karaoke. I like a bit of karaoke. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so there's something there. But well, I go with Kim. Why? Because he's an unknown quantity, and you sort of know what you're going to get with Vladimir Putin. Oh, His okay. personality yeah. has been demonstrated the world over. I mean, they're both a pair of knobheads. Well, but nobody really knows what goes on in North Korea. Do ah, they? So you're thinking maybe it's not shit, it's actually mint. Well, Dennis Rodman likes him. Yeah, but I'll I'll, I see, like your, I'll see your Dennis Rodman and I will raise you what can only be described as the sixth most successful action star of the night is in Steven Seagal. Right, well, I'm going to raise that with who I consider to be the third greatest actor of all time behind... Pacino and De Niro in that Sean Penn can't stand Vladimir Putin well Sean Penn can fuck off me and you need words after this it's a good job the the nutty geezer from Cornwall who would you go for a meal with out of them two I think there's something you both don't know about Kim Jong-un if um, this goes back to an Uber, please don't not the Uvers in 2014 the Daily Star reported, and the Mirror, oh, must be that, true. that Kim Jong-un is actually a United fan. Um, and also that he orders state TV to illegally broadcast Premier League matches. Um, right, so, so he's giving pirate TV to a nation, and you'd rather go with Vladimir Putin. Do you really want to talk about United right now? Do you really want to go for a scram with anyone and talk about United? I, I meet with you once uh, a week. To yeah. <laughs> well, imagine you go and meet a world leader and the first thing he wants to talk to you about is United. What's Manchester like? Honestly, I can't think of anything worse than discussing United with a world leader right now. On a, on a serious note, what do you make of where we're at, with where we're at, where things are at with the, the Ukraine and Russia situation? War. I, I feel for him um, in Ukraine. I do. I feel for some of the actual Russian people who didn't want this as well because yeah. they, they've been forced into this. But this comes from Putin. You can't invade a, a sovereign nation and, and expect them to just roll over and give you bits of their land. And I respect the fact that Ukraine aren't having it, going up against one of the most powerful countries in the world. They're doing well as well, like, like you know, scrappy underdogs. And yeah. Stuff like that. Apparently there's that story as well, isn't there, that Musk sort of in, interfered, didn't he, with the Starlink. Um, really? Yeah, that they use and, and that stop them doing a, an offensive against Russia so yeah I, I I I hate to see it I feel for him because it's been ongoing and obviously the Ukrainians are a proud people and they've got a lot of history there and they're trying to fight for their country and I, I respect that completely because Russia is the aggressor in this situation. Given the knock-on effect that it's having the world over I mean we can only speak for living in the UK but obviously it's uh, increased the cost of a lot of things in England not, and not for that reason but do you think the West so to speak, our Western states are doing enough to get involved with it? Or I think what the, the West are doing in terms of sending aid and arms and stuff to Ukraine, I, I respect that. And I think it, a lot of the, the issue I have is that it's being used as an excuse. You, you, you can't turn on your TV without seeing a Tory politician going, COVID in Ukraine, COVID in the yeah. war in Ukraine, COVID in the war in Ukraine, NHS waiting list, COVID, the war in Ukraine, and the boats on the channel. That's the blame for yeah. everything. Why is my kid's school falling apart? Oh, it's the war in Ukraine. What's that got I, to do I, with it? This is, this is a true conversation. I spoke to somebody in Sainsbury's the other day and I said, why is the price of avocados gone up? And they said, Ukraine. Yeah, of course it is. And I went, and I went avocados from Ukraine? Yeah, exactly. Went, Where? That <laughs> well-known hotbed of avocado production, Ukraine. Yeah. Right. Anything else, Alexia? We're going to call it a time for don't believe their shite. Yeah, I mean... We can quickly talk about the dog thing if you want. You know, with the um, XL bully dogs? Yes. Um, Rishi Sunak uh, today banned them, which I personally am quite happy about because I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but these kind of XL bully dogs, which are some kind of kind of crossbreed of these two really aggressive dogs have been like killing people and that, and Rishi Sunak 
today has, has, has banned them. Someone died, someone got killed today, didn't they, from, I think... Yeah. From an attack. It's, it's a cliche, but it's true. It's not these dogs that the issue, it's the owners. And if people can't own these dogs and, and be trusted with them, then they should be punished as well. Because the sad thing is, a lot of the time, these dogs do, you know, act in a certain way, then they get put down, and the owners might just get a slap on the wrist. And I think you, you should... Owning a dog is a responsibility. And it shouldn't just be dished out willy nilly. Take ownership. I, I I thought that there was um some form of prison sentence if your dog attacks someone. Don't well, you? Is it? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, there, I'm pretty sure there, is, okay. there, there, there is some law. Yeah, more I know than a fine. Different but a lot of the time, you've seen these dogs and they're just either being mistreated or they've got owners who either mistreat them, don't treat them in the right way, or encourage or allow them to have certain behaviours. So yeah, um, I don't know enough about the bully, the, the the bully dogs. I've seen a few articles. I know I've not really read it properly, but yeah, I think in terms of dog ownership, there's a lot there's a lot that's left to be desired with certain dog owners. Certainly is right. Let us know who you'd rather go out for a meal with. Would it be Vladimir Putin or would it be Kim Jong Un? Uh, make sure you keep subscribing to the show and please like and share with your friends. We'll be back talking football. I realise this is, I hasn't touched it. We haven't touched it once. That's good for us. Let's not. Let's, Let's not, not at all. Uh, but we will do on Monday. Uh, so we'll be seeing you soon. I'm Scotty. That's Moya, and that's a nutty geezer producer Ale Alexa. I can say Alex. Fuck that up. Close. Close. <laughs>